my joyful toastmaster parvati my colorful toastmaster orijit my mouthful toastmaster sunying and my dazzling fellow toastmasters my sparkling role takers and my stunning guest i milin kulapka sergeant of arm welcome you all to the enchanting enthralling engrossing 656 meeting of club number 1254322 of area 1 of division b of district 92 yes your own speech we will toast master club bangalore the theme for the day is joy of colors our club's mission is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self confidence and personal growth those masters have helped people from diverse background to become confident communicator and leaders i request you all to uphold the cardinal principle of every toastmasters meeting keep your audio microphone muted at all times except when you are invited to speak keep your video on at all times unless you are moving in and out of the room as an encouragement to every role takers and speakers make sure to applaud them virtually role takers and speakers will consciously refrain from expressing their views on sex politics and religion to ensure that the sentiments of audience are not heard it is my pleasure to introduce you to all our club president who is an active consulting engineer for civic civil and electromagnetic plant and also enjoys hearing and singing songs in english hindi telugu and tamil please join me in welcoming our club president toastmaster joseph benedict thank you milanji for that one great introduction very good evening and happy holi for all the toastmasters and the distinguished guests on this day of spring festival of the colorful holi festival which marks the triumph of good over evil i acknowledge our special guest who are helping our club today in participating a role taker also wishing them a very special way because of the time they have given as in spite of their family commitments dtm pat who is an evaluator one and toastmaster and anchi from gabby's toastmaster club and the speaker toastmaster pratik salt lake toastmaster club our counter become listener tm soon yang satyo hati toast master club grammarian toast master parvati indra nagar pride welcome to all of you as you know bangalore is now 34 degrees above till this warm up from our hearts to all of you i bring the 656 meeting in order today i will be taking the part of tmod i will talk about the team in the presidential address itself due to time constraint celebrations for holi begin on the evening of purnima full moon day in the hindu calendar month of falguna 
that falls around the middle of March. One of the most significant and joys of all festivals celebrated in the country is the colorful festival of Holi, also known as the Festival of Colors. It is celebrated with a lot of guests and excitement every year. It is known as Dol Jatra or Basant Utsava in West Bengal, Assam, and Tripura. Celebrations for Holi begin on the evening of Purnima, full moon day, in the Hindu calendar. Month of Falguna that falls around the middle of March. In most regions, Holi is celebrated for two days. The first day is known as Jalanwala Holi, the day when the Holy Bonfire is done. This day is known as Choti Holi or Holi Ka Dahan. The second day is known as Angwali Holi. This day when people play with colored powder and colored water. The festivals of Holi mirror the countries it originates from. The vibrancy, the community spirit, the delicious food, and now a growing conscious to what is environmentally sound. India is a land of diverse cultures and traditions. The diversity adds to the country's rich festive background. India probably the only country where you can always have every month a festival. The day is characterized by friends and family coming together. Indulging in the playful spirit of the festival and celebrating the day over colors, sweets, and delectable food. Food prepared on these special occasions is extremely rich in high-packed calories. However, the trend today is to switch over healthy eating. An increasing number of people are substituting rich sweets and saviors with the healthy counterparts. As the Holi fortunately fell on the day of our meeting, sometimes these festivals either come one day before or later. Today we have the Holi festival exactly on the meeting day. I thought let me take the opportunity to enjoy the festival together with our Toastmasters and our distinguished guests in sprinkling colors and sharing the sweets. Here are the colors I am exhibiting to you. And I brought also the sweets, generally laddus. I wish the meeting could have been on board or, or uh, offline. I would have really brought a lot of colors and a lot of sweets also. However, I'm just trying to exhibit this color and put it into my grandson, who is next to me now, uh, just as a mark of distributing the colors and giving him a lot of Bonita. He is my grandson, Dinakaran Joseph. After this street, let me take a few moments of entertainment with few jokes. And the entertainer is our guest Toastmasters. But before that, I would like to have a group photograph 
for all of us. Sure, sir, I'll take the photo right away. I would like all of you to turn on your videos. So that's three, two, one. Taken. I've taken the photo, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for that. And back to you, President. Yeah, uh, one second, my granddaughter has come a little late and here is, I am giving a color for her also. And giving the Lado. I hope others have taken the photograph. So granddaughter's face is not coming to her because she's not bending down to you. Today, we have programmed to invite those masters IC. Unfortunately, she met with an accident and she was, may not be able to take participate in this meeting. So I would like someone to take voluntarily the Toastmaster as a joke master today. Will there be anyone to take voluntarily? So to explain, the role is pretty simple. All you have to do is tell a joke from period of around one to two minutes. So if there's anybody that's interested in taking a joke master, then the role is yours. Anyone in the mood to tell a joke? Parvati, I think you might probably have a few jokes in your mind, I presume. Why not go ahead? I'm the last person to tell jokes, please. <laughs> me. All right, then I think we have a guest in the room. We have Toastmaster Brinda, I believe. Brinda, do you happen to have a joke that you'd like to share with us? All right, then I'll move on to Toastmaster Oreo in that case. Toastmaster Oreo, do you happen to have a joke in your mind that you'd like to tell? Uh, it's very awkward to tell jokes. Uh... Okay, uh, it's not a joke. Uh, let's uh, let's have some fun. So, uh, can anyone tell us about uh, some funny festivals in your own culture, which you find very funny or awkward? Like I will tell about Bengalis. We have one festival dedicated to the son-in-laws of a family. It's called Jamai Shoshti. So what they do that they invite the son-in-law for all the troubles he has taken in his life or all the risks he has taken in life by marrying the daughter of the family. They will invite him and then they will arrange an array of food uh, lined up with from desserts to the fish, chicken, mutton, everything. Only thing I am afraid of, like, so there was this one instance uh, where uh, one of my uncles, he came to our uh, to our house and we all gave him all these sweets and all that. He was very happy. But at the later part of the day, we had to take him to the hospital because he had over, uh, overeaten. So that was one awkward incident. So as uh, our presiding officer said, and the TMOD said that you have to be uh, cautious about the nutrition level also during festivals. And uh, any other festival which comes to your mind which you find funny? I recall in the North India, during, I presume it's a, during holy period only, the men, men's will have a shield, like the olden times the soldiers used to have. And they'll be running and the ladies will have uh, those batons with them, with their, do their you know, daily bread. And they will keep on bashing them. So it's a ba husband bashing festival and it seems they are enjoying it so that's something great because it's maybe once in a year there women have a free right to bash up for whatever no, they should be trouble they have the way indian men behave uh, i think they deserve it more than a day okay <laughs> on that note ladies and gentlemen if you have found it funny or not let's uh, uh, let, let us all have a great meeting and session we would have some very colorful thoughts and 
variety of ideas perceptions that are uh, that will come through from members uh, from toastmasters from across the world so i'm looking forward for this meeting and over to uh, the toastmaster of the day over to you sir thank you so much for this uh, very entertaining joke actually so what i would bless is made of fire of holy spirit purify your heart may the colors color your life may the sweet sweet the journey of your life this is my blessing for all those who have attended today for the meeting now i'll take the role of a toast master of the day toast master international is a learning platform for public speaking as well as communication skills having a membership of 300000 worldwide in 16800 clubs and in 149 countries the great legend ralph sis medley established the toastmaster international way back in the year 1924 in santa ana california unlike before we are no longer confined to only witnessed by our own club members but we are delighted to reach all over the globe due to networking system which inadvertently brought by the pandemic as a blessing in disguise today we have three sessions i would call it as pi the dictionary meaning of the pie is a baked dish of ingredients encased in or topped with pastry pie is also called in the sky a phrase a pleasant idea that is very unlikely to happen here the pie will stand as it is like p stands for prepared speech we have two one pathway speaker who will be entertaining you with his wisdom i stand for the second part of the session impromptu speeches in this session the speakers will be given a subject where they will have a very little time to think and speak for two minutes only this will cover thinking on the subject the body of the speech and the message in the last for the impromptu speech here is the third session where everyone will be anxiously waiting for the result of the performance what is known as evaluation this session is an important as the speeches that were performed in the two sessions evaluation is not a criticism but give you the opportunity to exalt your caliber now i would <coughs> to proceed with the next program of pi i would like to introduce the general evaluator of this meeting he is a senior toast master of the club and won many awards in competing with the juniors of the club He is a marathon runner and a yoga practitioner. He is a qualified lawyer, retired from the corporate company of secretary, company secretary, and is active member of the Commerce Institute of Bangalore chapter. Recently, he obtained a diploma in corporate governance, conducted by ICSI. When I asked him what is his favorite color, he said it is red. Let us welcome the one and only DTM Milenji with great applause. Over to you, Toastmaster Milenji. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day and the president of the club, Toastmaster Joseph Benedict. Feedback is the breakfast of the champion, and that's why every company. today commercial company every service provider ask for feedback from their clients from the customers because they want to 
take their product, their services to the next level. And that's exactly what Rao C. Swedley visualized almost 100 years back when he started the unofficial Toastmasters meeting. So here, the purpose is all the role takers who are playing their role, whether it's a prepared speaker, the table topic speakers, every role taker, how did he perform? What were the areas where he performed fantastically? He did a great job. Even that need to be highlighted because your strength, you have to be aware of your strength. Because only when you are aware of your strength, then only you can go to places and then you can even absorb some sessions to take your role or your speech to the next level. And that is exactly the role of a feedback session or the evaluation session. So I'm not alone. I have a team who will be supporting me. The team comprises of timer for the day, Toastmaster, Sushma. The Toastmaster, Sushma, over to you. Can you share your role as a timer in today's meeting? Yes, thank you so much. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I wish you all happy holy. And today I would be playing the role of timer. As the timer, my role is to monitor the time taken by each and every role taker and record the scene. To help you with the time management, I would be flashing different lights. When the speaker reaches minimum time, I would show green. And when the speaker is, when the role taker is in the middle of the speech, I would show yellow. And when the speaker or the role taker reaches maximum time of their speech, I would show red and 30 seconds grace time is provided to all the role takers. At the end of the, and the timings are as follows for different uh, role takers. So since we do not have prepared speeches uh, today, I would um, uh, tell you about uh, the timings of uh, table topics. For the table topics, the time is provided two minutes, 30 seconds. And when one minute, I would show green, one minute, 30 seconds, yellow, two minutes, red, and two minutes, uh, and it will remain uh, red till two minutes, 30 seconds. Yes. I would present my report at the end of the section when I'm called upon by general evaluator. Over to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Sushma for giving a demo of your role and even setting down the ground rules for every one of us to understand. Now it's time for the next role taker, the R counter, as well as the listener for the day. Toastmaster Sun Ying, over to you. Thank you, General Evaluator. As an R yeah. counter, I will be the one who note words and sounds that are used as crutches or pause failure by anyone who speaks during the meeting. I will listen for words and count that may be inappropriate expressions such as so, you know, la, sound may be ah, um, uh. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrases such as I, I, you, you, this mean, this mean. This is known as repeated words. And at the end of the meeting, I will provide a report for each speaker, whether they use these expressions. And as a listener, I will be providing some of the questions uh, based on the content of today's meeting. So back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Sun Ying, for taking a double role today. So kudos to her. And now it's the time for the grammarian for the day. So grammarian for the day, it's Toastmaster Parvati, over to you. Thank you, General Evaluator. A uh, very good evening to everyone present here and happy Holi. So as a grammarian today, I will be paying close attention to all the speakers' language usage today. And I'll be noting down some of the good usages and not so good usages and providing alternators on how to better them. Now, as the, as the responsibility uh, includes, I will be introducing the word of the day, which is mirth, or you could use it as mirthful. Now, what does it stand for? Uh, what does it mean? The meaning of the word mirth or mirthful is amusement, especially expressed in laughter or high spirited. Now, how do you use it in a sentence? First example here is she was full of mirth after winning the lottery. 
Another example would be, his eyes were mirthful as he spoke about his recent trip to Alaska. So I urge everybody to use the word, the word of the day, mirth, or its equivalents, mirthful, in your um, speeches today when you get a chance to speak on the stage. And I'll be keeping a tab of, a tab on people who are using the word of the day. And I'm, on, on that note, I would be also letting you know that when you use, when you learn a new word and use it immediately in your, in your sentence, you would retain the word in your natural vocabulary for a longer time. So when you have this, uh, option with you every Friday, why not use it anyway? That being said, I'll be bringing my report towards the end when the general evaluator will be calling me to present. And thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Parvati, for highlighting the importance of the word of the day and why it should be used right now. I would just like to help intimate you, though we don't have a prepared speech, so that's why we don't have a prepared speech evaluator. But today we have a unique thing. We have an evaluator for the table topic master. Who is he? I'll not let you know now. I'll keep that as a suspense and will introduce you after the table topic session is over. So with this, I hand it back to the Toastmaster of the day and will join you as and when he invites me. Over to the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Milanji. I think we plan for uh, Postmaster Pratik's speech today. He is not available or no? So, Postmaster Pratik will not be available, but instead, Postmaster Orojit will be playing the role of a speaker today, and his evaluator will be myself, Adarsh, and I'll be taking up the role of an evaluator. And I'll be, if you, if you wouldn't mind, I'll go ahead and state the project objectives, but before that, I'd like Postmaster Orojit to mention his speech title. Toastmaster Audio, would you mind mentioning your speech title? You have to unmute yourself if you don't. Uh, the speech title is The Winner. All right. The speech title is The Winner, I presume. So, Mr. President and Toastmaster of the Day, if you wouldn't mind, I'll go ahead and state the project objectives of Toastmaster Orojit. Oh, I think I should actually be asking the general evaluator, Toastmaster Millen, but I'll go ahead regardless. The speaker, the purpose of this project is for the member to practice using a story within a speech or giving a speech that is a story. The speech will be for five to seven minutes and Toastmaster Orojit, the stage is yours, over to you. Uh, okay, uh, if you don't mind, can I have some water before I start? Surely. Yeah, uh, sorry for the... So Zoom Master can add, rename him as a table topic evaluator and the speaker number one, Orojit. By the way, I think all of us must give a round of applause to Toastmaster Orojit, who's prepared for this challenge, by the way. The stage is yours, Toastmaster Orojit. In the 19th century, Emily Dickinson once wrote, success is count its sweetest for those who never succeed. To comprehend a nectar requires the sorest need. In the 21st century, we simply tell people, winning is not everything. It is the only thing. We live in a world that celebrates winners and rightfully so. We admire them for their determination, dedication, and the ability to delight us with their achievements. However, we live in a world that constantly nudges people to win every day, every time. And that societal pressure can create a sense of urgency and lead to anxiety. Whenever I have to counter such anxiety, I travel back to the day when I saw a winner. I was in my school bus, relieved and excited going to school. Relieved because the first period of the school for that day was canceled as the school was conducting the annual singing competition for the seniors. 
excited, well, I already knew the winner. The winner was sitting right beside me. Sumit Kali, the most melodious, the most artistic, and the most brilliant student of our school, the sinusure of all eyes. Now he sat beside me in deep concentration, swirling and twirling his hands as he practiced for the contest. Better to leave him alone. So I turned to my left and started talking with Venkat Bhaiya. Venkat Bhaiya was a very shy person. I was one of the lucky few to talk with him and I loved to discuss cricket with him. Sooner than later, the bus reached the school. After our morning prayers, we were asked to sit down on the corridor and the contest began. Now, if you are familiar with singing contests in school, they are an extension of the morning prayers because everyone came and sang a prayer, including Sumit Kali. He sang, abide with me fast, pause the even tide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. His voice had so much melody and melancholy that was like a breeze that soothed all. We were delighted. We knew we had our winner and the rest of the contest did not matter. Well, then suddenly steps in the contestant number 12. Venkat Vaya. Everyone started asking me, can your friend even sing? I did not know. And then Venkat Bhaiya started singing. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me, my love stands on golden sands and watches the ship that goes sail. Somewhere, he sang a romantic song that stunned the audience and scandalized the teachers. Meanwhile, I was hunting for my high school crush, only to find the stern eyes of my class teacher, Parade Madam. But Venkat Bhaiya was unaware of all this. As he concluded his song, there was a thunderous of People loved it. We had a new winner. And the winner was sitting right beside me that day while we were returning home in the school bus. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, was Sumit Kali. Surprised? Well, no one was. Because Sumit Kali was a better singer any day. But when Venkat Bhaiya stepped in the bus, everyone patted his back shook his hands and asked him the same question. Venkat Bhaiya, for whom did you sing that song? He just smiled back. That incident taught me a lesson. Often in the pursuit of winning, we lose the purpose of winning. What is winning all about? Is it about awards, accolades, appellations? No, winning is about influencing the human spirit. It is about knowing our inherent, inherent limitations, challenging ourselves, breaking the boundaries, espousing love, and most importantly, spread hope. That day, while I saw Venkat Bhaiya perform, I hoped that one day I will come on the stage and entertain people, if not sing melodiously as him. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where there's a constant pressure of performing. But we should understand that we have to influence human behavior to make them believe in themselves. To paraphrase Emily Dickinson, success is counted sweetest 
for those who bring the best within them and for the people around them. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, if you can achieve that, you are the winner. Thank you. That was a wonderful, amazing speech given by the speaker today about the success and how to achieve it. Now we will be moving to the second session of impromptu speech. This session will be conducted by our Toastmaster, is the youngest sibling of our speech viewers club. He won the contest for his naughtiness in his classroom. However, he has a brilliant career and he as a consultant at Profit Wealth Management Private Limited and the director at Deep Orchids Technologies Private Limited. His hobbies is creative writing, reading, watching, about writing about football and exploring new ideas for a startup. I asked him what is his favorite color. He says his favorite color is dark blue. Let us invite with great applause our younger sibling, Toastmaster Adarsh Krishna. Over to you, Toastmaster Adarsh Krishna. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Toastmaster of the day and our presiding officer, Toastmaster Joseph. So I think we have come to the crux of the event right now. Those are those what everything boils down to. It boils down to table topics mania. It's, a, it's something that I came up with in random. So forgive me for that. <laughs> Regardless, table topics, as you already know, is one segment during a Toastmasters meeting where your impromptu speaking skills are put to test. You are put in this position where you're tasked with talking about a topic that you have no awareness of. Maybe you may have heard it somewhere before, but then again, you don't have an answer for it. You'll only have one minute, one to, one, one to two minutes to talk about it, and you'll have a race time of around 30 seconds. 30 seconds will be provided by the timer. And I will be your table topics master for today. And I'll be offering you tons of topics. Of course, you don't have the biggest attendance. So that probably opens up the opportunity for each and every one of you to participate. And that includes the timer as well. Without any further ado, I'm going to go on to our first topic for today. And our first topic will be taken up by Toastmaster Kaustub. Toastmaster Kaustub, are you ready to take up a topic today? I think Toastmaster, I can, yes. I can yes. I turn the camera because I didn't tie my beard. All right, then. Uh, maybe you can, can you go ahead and reply without your camera on? Is that all right? Uh, if that's okay with you. All right, then. That sounds good. So this is your topic for today, Toastmaster Kaustup. I hope you have pinned the timer in case if you haven't already. Your topic goes, what if, what if the world turned black and white tomorrow. Let me repeat. What if the world turned black and white tomorrow? Over to you, Toastmaster. I think it's a very good point because um, I think it would bring about equality. Um, Unknown to us, there are a lot of men out there who suffer from color blindness. And this is particularly common in the male species, sorry, male of the species. Um, they don't come forward and say that they have this problem. Uh, but these are people who shouldn't be, you know, working in heavy machinery industries or driving cars around because they can't differentiate between the colors and the traffic light and all that. So I think it's a very good thing if the colors of the world disappear. Uh, we can go back to a place where we all see, including animals and men, uh, sorry, not man, human um, in a general natural world, um, include animals and uh, humans um, see the same things and nobody is privileged uh, more than the other. So I hope it comes around. I hope we lose our colors and we live in a world where everything is equal for everyone. Thank you. 
that was a very interesting take from your Toastmaster class to I was actually taken back because I was expecting someone to go, hey, what about this? I mean, why? I mean, I cannot imagine a world without colors. But then again, you went ahead and said, I think it'd be fair if we lived a world where there were no colors at all. I'm going to go ahead with the next speaker for today. Our next speaker will be a guest from the audience. I'd like to call upon Toastmaster Stella. Stella, are you ready to take, are you ready to take up topic? Yes, yes, I, I will take a topic. And uh, sorry, I, I shall be. I shall have my video up if that's okay. All right then, Stella. I think you can probably keep your video off in that case. Of course, yes. we'd love to have you with the video on, obviously, so that it'd be much easier. I know, I know, I know. And it's all right. I'm going to go ahead with the next topic. The topic will be. There's a quote. I want you to listen to it very closely. It goes, "Even in darkness, light dawns." for those who believe. Let me repeat, even in darkness, light dawns for those who believe. Do you agree with the statement? Those I do. I, uh, fellow taste masters and guests, I do agree with that completely. I know from personal experience, when I've gone through a very dark period in my life, the first thing I think is, why me? But then, in retrospect, I think, Sometimes we have to go through challenges. Sometimes we have to go through change and they're not easy for us to see the light. We do things all the time and we don't actually even recognize that what we're doing is not correct. But the universe sends us a message and often that message is in the darkness. Recently, I have had an experience of uh, my father passing away and other things. And I was very upset, I was very sad. I was thinking, you know, why do all these things have to happen to me all at once? But today I'm looking at you and this is only what, two, three weeks ago. And I'm seeing the light because for me, it was resolution. For me, it was change. And also it made me see that, you know, if we don't change, we don't move forward in life. So yes, I completely agree that through darkness, we see light. Mr. Topics Master. Thank you very much for that, Stella. I would like all of you to give a round of applause to Toastmaster Stella. That was an excellent take on the topic. I genuinely loved it. Now I'm going to move to the next person in the room. The person that I'm looking at it right now is actually the timer in today's meeting. Toastmaster Shushma, I would like you to take up the next table topic. And don't worry, I'll operate the timer cards. You don't have to worry about <laughs> so it at all. Nice. So the topic for you goes light or dark, what would you choose and why? Your topic, light or dark, what would you choose and why? Okay, then I would choose in that case, dark. There is a saying and there is a belief also because when we see dark, then we realize the importance of light. Um, I can relate it, relate in the sense it is not any um, difficult phase or anything. I wouldn't relate in that way, in obstacles or hurdles way. When uh, we were small, uh, due to my father's transfers, we were uh, all the time, we were on the move in uh, villages like that. And uh, the power cut always during examinations also we have experienced the power cut one hour, sometimes two hours during the summer, uh, especially exams time happen that because of uh, um, the uh, I mean, uh, village uh, the, that way. And after the power comes, we, we feel so happy. Oh my God, current has come and now can uh, uh, presume my studies, resume. So uh, not only we related to our studies, even in our real example also, when we see that darkness, when we uh, compare it with our uh, obstacles in the process of uh, our goal achieving or anything. And when we see that, when we go through that, then we realize the importance of victory or success anything so that is why it is uh, important for us to go through challenges and then you will import uh, you will know the importance of that it will cherish you once when you are in light and the success what you get it um, it cherishes you so i i, I would choose dark 
over to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you for giving such a wonderful topic. Thank you very much for that, Toastmaster Shushma. That was an excellent take on the topic. Of course, a lot of us prefer light over the dark, but it was nice to see you choose dark over light. And I think there was actually a genuine reason for it. And that is something that all of us were moved by. Thank you very much for that. Now I'd like to move to the next speaker in the room. I would like to call Toastmaster Sunying. Toastmaster Sunying, we're going to take up the next topic. Okay, I can give you a try. All right then. So here's your topic. Your topic goes, be the light. It's actually a quote. I'm going to listen to it closely. It goes, be the light that helps others see. Let me repeat, be the light that helps others see. Do you agree with the statement, Toastmaster Sunyan? Be the light that help others see. I think this quote uh, applied to me very well. And I totally agree with this quote. Because in my life, I have a lot of light that is helping me to see the light in my life. Because during the whole time, I am a not that confident children. So I cannot see a lot of things in a in a normal way. Because when I'm with a group of people, I will be very afraid of them because I don't know what they are you'd be thinking about me. But because I'm in kindergarten, I have a teacher who is able to talk to me slowly. And she have pointed out a lot of directions for me to look at. For example, when I am in the in a ceremony with a bunch of friends, although they are playing very happily, but I will sit beside them and look at my book because I, I felt that, that that group is not suitable for me. But my teachers will tell me to enjoy the moment with them instead of looking at the book by myself because book I can read by myself but the moment with your friends is a moment that you cannot create by yourself. You need to enjoy that, enjoy it and create a memory for me. So I totally agree with the quote, be the light, help others to see the light in your life because I have met a lot of people that help me to see the light. I hope everyone of you here also have someone that helped you to see the light in your life. Thank you, back to you. Thank you for that, Toastmaster Sun Yang. That was an excellent take, I think. There was a personal story that you attached to it and I thought it was truly really brilliant. But of course, I'm going to let the evaluator do the work. I think Toastmaster Orojo will probably be interested in doing that. But regardless, thank you very much for that table topic. We cannot wait to see you back again. Now I'm going to move to a guest in the room. I'm going to call upon Toastmaster Momina. Toastmaster Momina, would you like to take up the next topic? Yeah, sure. I'll try All my right best. Toastmaster Momina, would you mind turning on your camera so that I can spotlight you? Just yeah. I don't know something. Which, okay, now it's on. If I'm not, it mistaken. was on for a bit of time, but not right now. I don't know. Something is an issue. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it is fine now. I think you're on the spotlight. Yes. Toastmaster Momena, here's your topic for today. So it is another quote. It goes. It goes, the best leaders are the ones who show their true colors, not during, not during the difficult times, but during just one, one, just a minute. I'll go for a different topic. I think I've actually messed up this topic. Apologies for that. Yeah. The topic goes, it's a pretty simple topic, by the way. It's a quote from a famous musician called John Mayer. It goes, life is like a box of crayons. Let me repeat, life is like a box of crayons. Do you agree with this topic, Toastmaster Mohana? I will start with in one story. That is in the one room, all the elders were being called and they were being given the colors. They selected all the colors and they did the paintings and all. And they were then they were being asked to leave the room. 
after them, the small kids were being asked and whatever color were being left, they were being asked to use it and make the painting. The kids did the painting and later on, both the groups were being asked to sit in front of each other. And they were being asked to show the each other painting. The elders show the beautiful painting which they did with using all the colors. And the kids showed the painting, whatever they did with whatever colors were left. The takeaway from the story, what is it? That we elders, we use everything, forgetting that what we are going to teach if we are using everything. Yeah, if they would have thought that someone can be using it later on, they could have saved some color for someone else. And that is a way of leader. They can think of others, keep something for others, and lead by example than just thinking of themselves. If they were, and that, that is the same thing we are doing with the nature also. We are just using for ourselves, not thinking of the future. So that's all I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Toastmaster Momina. That was an excellent take on the topic. I think you took a very different approach. I love the personal story and the way you just expressed yourself in a manner that I truly was amazed by. Now I would like to move to the next speaker in the room. For the next speaker, I would like to call another guest in the room. I would like to call Anish. Guest Anish, would you like to take up the next topic? And I'd also like you to turn on your video so that I can spotlight you on Zoom. Um, just a second. Yeah. Uh, are you able to see me, sir? Yes, you're very much visible. Now I'm going to go ahead. And this is your topic for today. Now, if you're not aware, a table topic is a topic where you'll be asked or made to speak about a completely random topic for one to two minutes with a grace period of 30 seconds. You'll have a timer. She'll be displaying three different cards. I think you must have already listened to it. So this is your topic for today. It goes, you'll never find a... Just a minute. Describe a colorful place you have seen or wish to see in your life. Describe a colorful place that you wish to see or have seen in your life. Over to you, Toastmaster. I'm sorry, guest Anish. Yeah, uh, about a colorful place for me uh, would be Venice, Italy. Because uh, the first time that I actually saw the images, like, uh, for me, uh, anything that inspires me basically is just pictures and images, and I really like to click them. When it comes to colors, the first thing that I could visualize is uh, Venice, Italy, because of the vast amount of cultures that is there in that place and the amount of history that is there in that place. So, um, Um, would you mind repeating the topic if it's okay? Surely. The topic goes, describe a colorful place you have seen or wish to see in your life. A place that you have seen before or a place that you wish to see. Okay. So uh, the place I've seen before, is, is, I've, I've not been an avid traveler as of yet. And the place that I would wish to see is, like I said, Venice, Italy, because uh, color is... A very subjective thing because color can just mean almost anything. Um, for me, colors generally mean is uh, with respect to culture and languages. For me, I think, uh, like I said, Italy would be that place. So I'd like to end with that, if that's okay. Thank you very much for that. Yes, Anish, it was an absolute pleasure to have you at our meeting. Now I'm going to go ahead and by the way, I think that was truly brilliant. He, it is his first meeting at Toastmasters. So I'd like all of you to give a round of applause for trying an impromptu speech. I've always found this challenging myself. So thank you very much for coming by. Now I would like to move to the next person in the room. So I'd like to call. Hmm, I have been laying my eyes on the grammarian for quite some time. So I'd like to call upon Toastmaster Parvati. Please make us feel mirthful with your presence and your table topic. So your topic goes... Just a minute, I'll spotlight you in front of everybody. That's right. Your topic goes, it is a quote, by the way, and it goes, life is an art, live yours in color. Life is an art, live yours in color. So it's a quote that someone said, do you agree with the statement? 
over to you, Toastmaster Parvati. Thank you, TTM Adarsh, for the topic. Life is an art and live yours in a colorful manner. It's a beautiful quote, I would say, because uh, I'd like to relate our life to that of a blank canvas. And when we live through our experiences, we paint different things. And that's how we, over time, we make it into a beautiful painting. So when we are, not when we, when I am awaiting my death, I would simply want to look at the painting that I drew through the uh, times that I lived, in my, lived my life through the experiences I have uh, gone through, through the meaning, meaningful relationships that I had, um, I happened to make during my journey called life. So it's a beautiful quote. I don't know what, uh, if I can extend more than this. If I do, if I flesh out more on what I just spoke, it would just uh, come out pretty uh, uh, boring. So I would just simply end my talk here by saying that I'd like to find, or I'd like to correlate, and I always do uh, correlate life to that of a blank canvas. And it's up to you how you want to paint your life or your canvas and make it as beautiful as you wish to. Thank you. Thank you very much for that Toastmaster Parvati. I might probably start with blank slate myself, probably starting from tomorrow because there are times where we don't, we don't do things right. So it's important for us to start at the blank canvas and go ahead and get things done. Thank you very much for that take. We'd love to see you back at Speech Weavers again. Now I would like to move to our general evaluator, our general evaluator, DDM Millen, to take up the next topic. So would you be interested in taking up the next topic? Sure. All right, then. I'll look for the most suitable topic for you because I have way too many in my mind. The topic goes, let me spotlight you. The topic goes, the faster you accept reality, the faster you'll find your peace of mind. Let me repeat, the faster you accept reality, the faster you'll find your peace of mind. Is this a statement that you'd agree with, ATM Millen? Reality. What is reality? Is it what someone tells you? Oh, you can't do this. This is not your cup of tea. This is meant for the rich people. This is meant for Elon Musk. You are from a poor family. Or reality is something which you yourself can do. Like Napoleon said, you can build your own reality. So that is one area which you need to be focused on. So there is a thought process which says, yes, you can create your own reality. And for that, the process is there. So you have to have a proper thought. Then you have to put your thoughts should become into words. And then your words should come into action. Then those action becomes your habit. And your habit becomes your value. And your values becomes your destiny or your reality. This is a magic mantra which has been given by our beloved Mahatma Gandhi. So this is something we need to be careful or you should be aware of. So reality, as they say, which helps you grow. The faster you know the reality, it gives you peace of mind. But at the same time, an ambitious person is never has a peace of mind. He always tries to have something more and more and more. And that is why we differentiate animals and human beings. When it comes to a cow or any animal, they will keep on chewing the curd again and again and same thing will repeat. But human beings are not meant for that. They are meant to do something different because every human being is born with something unique things. One has to identify that, nurture that, polish that, and then make it into a diamond. So that is something important. So be aware of your reality. Be aware of reality means your strength. Identify your strength. Identify your weakness and then convert your thought into your reality, your destiny. Over to Table Topic Master, Adarsh. Thank you very much for that distinguished Toastmaster, Millen. That was truly brilliant of you. I knew for a fact that you were going to nail that and you did a wonderful job with that. 
I'm going to let the evaluator do the talking after this. I'm not going to be doing any of that. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. It was a pretty difficult topic, but I think you managed to capture the emotion and the story that was required. I will move to the final person in the room that has not received any taste of any of the table topics I've had in my bag of joy and table topics. I'd like to call upon the presiding officer, Toastmaster Joseph Felix Benedict, to take up the next topic. So I hope you're ready. I think you have to, I'll spotlight you and I'd like you to unmute yourself. Yeah, the screen was a little far, so I have to go there and unmute you, okay. Go ahead, uh, others. All right then, so this is your topic. It is a quote from Sir Christian Goldman Omen. It goes, friends show their true colors in times of need, not in times of happiness. Let me repeat, friends show their true colors in times of need, not in times of happiness. Is this a quote that you agree with, Toastmaster Joseph? A friend in need is a friend in need. That is what we always hear right from the childhood. That anecdote is very true. Most of the friends are opportunities also. It depends upon what kind of friends you have, whether rich or poor. If you are mingling with the rich, they don't care for you. If you are mingling with the other poor people or a moderate people of your own uh, uh, level or something like that, they do really care for you because if you treat them whatever manner you like, whether they are rich or poor, that is the most important thing that brings back to you. What you sow is so you reap also because anything that you do to them, it is not necessary that they should repay you. Sometimes it, it, anything that uh, many people no matter what their caliber is, but sometimes they struggle hard for something without so able to uh, uh, take up the challenge. And that is the time the friend comes into the rescue. He always says that, okay, I'm here. Why are you worried about? I will help you. That was the nature of a friend who is indeed a good friend. When it comes to happiness, everybody can share the happiness together. There is nothing wrong in it. But at the same time, if you are marooned and if you had a very bad time, a friend comes and gives you a solace, a advice, a strength, a moral support. That is where you are looking for and you will be consoled. You will definitely uh, be happy about that friend who comes at that point of time to give a peace of mind, which is more essential in anyone's life. So when you choose a friend, it is up to you whom you choose and you have to settle for it whenever the time comes. Over to you, Toastmaster Hadesh. Thank you for that. Toastmaster Joseph, the next one take on the topic. Now this wraps up the table topic session for today. Thank you very much for being a part of this. I've had an excellent time listening to all of you. And our evaluator, Toastmaster Arojit, is already feeling the heat, or I would say he's finding it difficult to evaluate each and every one of you, but I'm sure he'll do a great job. On that note, I'd like to hand it back to the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Joseph Felix Penetra. Thank you, Toastmaster, uh, Table Topic Master. This session is synonymous with the color theme of today. Let us give a great applause for the toast table topic master and also all those who spoke about the subjects which have given to them from their heart and mind, the truth or whatever it is. They have done very well. Give a great, great applause to each and every speaker who spoke on this subject. Thank you so much for all of them. When I mentioned the name Krishna, I remember Lord Krishna. We had a great time with his devotee Radha and also the gopis on 
this kind of celebration of holy sprinkling colors on them as a as the history says let us now move to a very important session called the performance report of the whole meeting of which we are now conducting i will hand over this to our general evaluator toastmaster dt milinji over to you dt milinji for your digital analysis of the entire meeting thank you thank you over to you thank you toastmaster of the day toastmaster joseph performance report have you missed your heartbeat relax you can get peace toastmaster performance report is not that way you should do what you are doing it so before i step into my evaluation i would request the evaluator for the prepared speech toastmaster adarsh to give his inputs on the speech of the impromptu prepared speaker toastmaster arijit over to toastmaster adarsh thank you very much for that distinguished toastmaster melan my target speaker for today is toastmaster arojit who happened to step up and deliver a speech without even telling us about it thank you very much for that toastmaster arojit your the objective of your speech was to deliver a speech that involves telling a story i think that was the prime objective of the speech and i can tell for a fact that you achieved that you had so much gusto energy and he had this amazing opening where you spoke about how winning can actually lead to anxiety you spoke about how winning can leave a person in a state where he feels despair when something doesn't go right i was able to sense an excellent sense of emotion that stemmed from within and i was able to connect with that as a human being and that matters a lot audience engagement was on par with excellence i thought there were some exceptional usages there were some imageries there were some great combination of vocabulary that i thought was essential to take your speech to the next level and i think you truly achieved that swirling and twirling melody melody and melancholy so much there was just so much in that i thought it was a bag of joy that i enjoyed thoroughly and you also had an excellent closing message to make it all better you had this message that went in the pursuit of winning we lose ourselves and that is so much true that is so apt it is so so important and it's something that all of us see every day winning is something that we must achieve and it's something that must catapult our inner belief or our inner spirit and not that ego that resides within us and that's something i truly sensed in your speech as well great you had an excellent stage presence you felt like a, you looked like a showman the entire time and i truly found that absolutely delightful it was very flamboyant i must say i must tell now come into certain areas where you can actually improve as a speaker now i was not able to find too many areas where i could improve because i thought you literally had everything that i would want from a speaker but the one area where i thought you could have probably improved is with your movement i thought there was a great deal of movement there of course you such a gesture that always permitted and it always enhances your ability to speak and makes your speech something so much better something larger than life something out of the ordinary but at the same time it's important that you reduce the moment so that it doesn't distract the audience to a great extent because there were times that i just thought that you were just i don't know there was just so much going on that so maybe if you could work on that then i think you'd probably be able to do better and aside from that i honestly couldn't see much i thought you literally covered every aspect of what one must want or one must want one must need from a table topic or a speech in general you were truly brilliant in the way you approached it i thought you were brilliant and you also had this excellent story to back up the entire incident which is truly nice i was able to sense this great deal of emotion involving a character and by the name sumit gale who happened to be someone that was truly brilliant in your school he was an all rounder good at everything that he does regardless wonderful story wonderful stage presence great energy the only area i would like you to work on is your movement i think there was just too much going on there maybe if you could contain that then i think you'd be able to take it to the next level that is only to ensure that the audience continues keeping their eyes on you but regardless wonderful and i'd like to give you a round of applause i'm not going to criticize you way too much because what you did was truly exceptional i'd like all of you in this room to give a round of applause to those masters thank you very much 
Thank you very much for the Toastmaster Orange. I'd like to hand it back for the general evaluator of the day, Toastmaster DTM Melon. My apologies. Thank you, Toastmaster Adarsh, for your evaluation as per the Toastmasters' etiquettes and principles. You followed the principle, highlighting all the excellent words or excellent actions or unique features which the speaker, Olujit, highlighted or had the strength. He was focused on the strength. And then after sharing the multiple strength of the speaker, you just gave a suggestion for one or two points. And then again, you ended up with focusing, reminding him about his strength and the areas where he can improve. That's what, something which we call a sandwich method. That is exactly what is required because it's a human absorption is better when they come to know about their strength first and then they're able to absorb the areas where they can improve on or areas they are slightly weak areas. So that is a psychological aspect which you had focused. So kudos to you for that. And you covered the entire thing as far as the prepared speaker is concerned, Toastmaster Origin. So I don't have any other suggestions for Toastmaster Origin. And now I come to the next evaluator. The next evaluator will be evaluating the table topic session. He's a person who is a professionally associated with Kotak Securities. And he doesn't have any hobby in particular. At times, he's an abrupt poet and an abrupt photographer. And his favorite color is color of leaves. Green, wow. So please join me in welcoming the table topic evaluator, Toastmaster Ulujit. Thank you, Toastmaster Melind, for introducing me to your lovely audience. It was an absolute pleasure to listen to all the table topics uh, speeches. And I was uh, a little confused when I was approached for this role about uh, what are the aspects I should focus on. So I primarily focused on two areas, uh, that is the speech development and the effectiveness of the speech. And uh, we had wonderful topics. I would not like to give this as a word of advice. A lot of Toastmasters do uh, is that keep your topics short but Toastmaster Adash, I truly believe that if there is a beautiful quote or beautiful idea, no matter the length, people will always try to reflect upon it. And you have done uh, pretty well in uh, introducing those topics to the speakers who for your, uh, who for, uh, your kind attention, almost all of them spoke very freely and had a little reluctance or hesitation while ex uh, uh, while explaining or while uh, reflecting their thoughts upon it. A good job there, Toastmaster Adarsh. And now I will start with the first speaker who was asked whether the world will be painted black and white. So I, I hope I don't have any timing constraint. Do I have any timing constraint? Yes, Toastmaster or Yes. Toastmaster Orojit, yes, there is a timing constraint. I think Toastmaster Shushma will explain it. Yeah, for overall timing is given five minutes. So I would show green at uh, three and four, yeah, four at, uh, yes, five and red. Okay. How Thank much you. time already has taken, Sushma? You can even highlight to him. Orojit, so um, uh, you can take one minute for each uh, speaker. That yeah, would be okay. No, I, I expect it to be a little shorter. So nonetheless, thank you all for telling me about the timing. And uh, the first speaker was Toastmaster Kostov, and he was asked whether he would look forward to a world that is painted black and white. What I particularly liked about Toastmaster Lee, he said, yes, I would like the world to be black and white. And, uh, and then he created interest in the audience by telling us about the difficulties of people who uh, suffer from colorblindness. 
and uh, that can have a lot of challenges. They cannot become uh, uh, pilots. They cannot join. They cannot become doctors. So these are the difficulties which we are unaware of or hardly think about it. So Toastmaster Costup did a brilliant job in directly addressing the problem, and why uh, he chose that came out very beautifully. So uh, there is very little to recommend to him because his uh, thought, uh, the way he organized his thought, was nicely done. Our next speaker was Toastmaster Stella um, Meadows, and uh, she was asked whether light dawns in those who believe, uh, who, who believe in times of darkness, those who believe in light, they come with flying colors. And she related it with a personal story and how she had faced a recent tragedy and how she's trying to overcome it. So the relativity, uh, uh, the relatable aspect of it drew everyone. And the other part uh, which we all enjoyed was there was barely any reluctance. Like when we think about any personal tragedy, it is very difficult to express ourselves. But the, uh, uh, but the way she organized the smoothness she had as a speaker, was nicely done, and that is something I would like to inculcate as a speaker. Thank you, Toastmaster Stella, for that very wonderful thought which you presented. Next speaker was Toastmaster Su Ying, and uh, she was given uh, another topic about being the light, and she also related with a personal story. Uh, the beautiful aspect of it was that though there was a little hesitation of coming to the topic, but then when she came to that personal aspect of the story, she spoke very freely about it. And such encouraging teachers she had who have made an impact on her life. And she continues to make that impact on people around her deserves full kudos. So I really appreciated the effective part of her speech delivery. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Sue, for that wonderful thought. And then uh, this is something I really enjoyed was our next speaker, Toastmaster Momina. Toastmaster Momina was asked about life is a box of crayon, crayons. And she related with a very popular advertisement which had come about four years back by Surf, where kids were handed some dark uh, shades of crayon and uh, the grown-ups were given. The best aspect of the speech was the idea of that in, uh, ad was all about environmental environment and all that. But what Momina beautifully uh, brought out of that whole experience was uh, telling us about her aspect of what is to being selfless that uh, we can uh, preserve, uh, we can uh, imbibe some selflessness and then it will become a wonderful world, not only for us, but people who will follow us. So that aspect came out very beautifully. And uh, the only aspect she has to work on would be handling the camera. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was a very beautiful thought process she uh, created upon. Okay, uh, our next speaker was uh, our uh, first time speaker. Uh, I like to tell, I like to call everyone as Toastmaster. So Toastmaster Anish, when he came on the stage, he was asked about the place where he would like to go uh, or describe a colorful place. So uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of this Rudyard Kipling poem of six honest men, uh, the Ws and the H part of it. So uh, so uh, Anish, here is a word of advice. Whenever you are asked something randomly, so approach it with what has been asked. So you explain the what or the where part of it. Like, where do you want to go? You want to go to Italy, but you have to come to the idea of why do you want to go to that place? You just were about to treat on that path about when you mentioned culture and language. You could have extrapolated on that thought process a little bit. You could have told us why were you so uh, deeply impacted by say, culture and language. 
like if i have to go to italy i would definitely go for the football matches like others would do but uh, this is a, a certain advice i would like to hand it over to you and next we have uh, parvati she was asked about uh, living uh, life is an art and uh, so she beautifully told us uh, about the idea of a blank canvas and how she can uh, how one can paint it the word of advice i would like to give her would be to organize the thoughts uh do not tell uh, that if i tell this it will become very boring because that becomes a little disengaging for the people who are listening to you be direct try to extrapolate have various uh, diverse opinion and then give us a thought about it but uh, that uh, the way you concluded it about telling us about the black canvas and how to paint it very beautifully that came out really like uh, nicely the next speaker toastmaster milan well that was a <laughs> incredible uh, the toastmaster uh, the table topic master was already aware of the prowess and he and milan did not uh, disappoint him what comes out very well out of the thought process was uh, that one can make out that milan loves to read to be a good toast master uh, a table topic a person who can speak fluently on a variety of topics he has to be well read when uh, toast master milan told us about the ideas of uh, mahatma gandhi from uh, thoughts to words to action to habit to value to destiny that was so nicely brought out and he uh, in fact attributed it to the author a lot of people like to take credit here i have only told but no milind uh, did not do that and uh, that was one as uh, that was the chief aspect of his speech which appealed to me and the last speaker was toastmaster joseph toastmaster joseph i am already impressed by the way he has celebrated holi with all of us and his grandchildren it was very sweet and the thing i absolutely love about him is that uh, is very direct and uh, he said at one point he said in his speech i am here i will help you a true friend will do that and every one of us could relate with a friend like that and uh, he had a wonderful way of concluding it choose a friend wisely you have to learn from those experience so it was a very wonderful experience as a listener and i would like to thank everyone for and reaching me with your thoughts thank you thank you table topic evaluator ojit in fact kudos to him he actually used the table topic essence today to speak on the fly when the opportunity comes whether it was a joke master he grabbed that opportunity whether it was the prepared speech slot suddenly becoming going a begging he grabbed it and of course the role which he have was supposed to do he did it with aplomb so kudos to him let me just a suggestion to the our vp education the timing for him could have been focused explain to him well in advance so it was mentioned in the agenda but he need to be educated but that would have helped him to prepare the thing because normally when we have this Table topic marathons. The evaluators are not given beyond thirty seconds. With all that, they have to focus quickly. What are the two good things, or a couple of things, an area for improvement? That's all. No, no other frills. So that is something one has to work on. So that is required. Otherwise, we overstep it. So thank you for everyone of us, and thank you, table topic evaluator, Owen, once more. So let's give a round of applause. for the triple gold player of the day now we come to the grammarian for the day oh sorry i yeah i will first start with the uh, r counter where i would encourage grammarian to pick up some things from the r counter too so i would request the r counter to give her a report 
So over to Toastmaster Sun Ying. Thank you, General Evaluator, and I'm mindful to congratulate the following persons who did not say any crutches during the meeting, which is which are Gas Momina, GE Milan, and our Toastmaster of the evening, yourself. Congratulations to you all. And this is my report for timer Sashma. Uh, you, you have two R, total speech crutches two. For guess, cash. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrongly. Cash, cash. The five R and one you know. So total speech crutches six. For two master table topic master Adash one R total speech crutches one. For guess Stella two R and one you know total speech crutches three. For guess Anish ten R and total speech crutches ten. For grammarian, poverty, six uh, R, total speech crutches six, and for our table topic evaluator, Origit, you have forty seven R and two so so total speech crutches is forty nine. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sun Yin, for highlighting the beautiful things about our counters go. Now I would request you to give your, continue with your listeners word too. Okay, my listening. Is it I just ask questions and you guys will just answer? All right. Absolutely. Okay. So first questions. What is today holiday by Joseph? Holy. Holly, yes, correct. <laughs> Second question. What is the contest Origi attend during his school day? Muse. Music. music. I think it's a singing contest, I believe. Music contest. Singing contest. Yes, singing contest. The question. What is winning about by Origi? Winning is the, the inner spirit, is it? Yes, influencing human spirit, knowing right. and challenge ourselves, and most importantly, to spread hope. Fourth, number four, why black and white world is good for cash, cash during his table topics. No one. This is to say that uh, people cannot get. Due to color blindness, people cannot go forward in their life. So, say so black and white is good. Uh, I catch that because it helped to create a world with equality in his first sentence. Yes. And then for question number five, what color did Sushma choose? Light or dark during her table topic? Dark. Yes, dark. Number six. Convert your thought into your reality and your destiny was spoken by whom? Convert your thought into your reality and your destiny was spoken by whom? No one? Okay. Art and, art, art and its uh, life in color. No. Your life in art and its color. Uh, it was spoken by whom? This sentence, oh. convert your thought into your reality and your destiny. Uh, I will real answer. It's spoken by our general evaluator, Ian, during his table topic sessions. So that's all from me. Thank you. Back to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Sun Ying, for taking double roles today as an art counter as well as a listener. And you performed it very colorfully and mirthfully. Great, and kudos to her. Now I hand it over to the grammarian of the day. Over to Toastmaster Parvati. Thank you, DTM Amulin. Starting with the good usages, I have a list, so bear with me. Cardinal principles, 
familial commitments, indulging in playful spirit of the festival, replace rich sweets and savouries with healthy counterparts, inadvertently brought a blessing in disguise, constantly nudging, constantly nudges people, crux of the meat event, help you light in your life, help you light the, help you light in your life, magic mantra, eyeing on the grammarian, that was a clever usage, uh, nurture, polish one's reality, beautifully put together, synonymous with the color theme today, impromptu prepared speakers, speaker, flamboyance, disengaging to audience, his prowess. So these were some of the really good usages uh, that I found worth taking notes. And then coming to the people, coming to the not so good usages was, uh, I just found just two of them. One, winner was sitting besides me. Uh, the speaker was often found using uh, besides me instead of beside me. So when somebody is seated next to you or adjacent to you, you say it as beside me. Now, another uh, error that I had come across was feed it upon. So feed it is the incorrect usage for the past tense of feed. It should be fed upon. These are the only incorrect usages which I'm guessing was a slip of tongue rather, not uh, something that would have come out due to uh, or unbeknownst to them. Um, that being said, coming to the important part to see who made it to the elite list of the grammarian. So DTM Milan definitely started off powerfully by using the word mirth and mirthful in different uh, scenarios. He's used it multiple times. And our uh, table topics master, Adash, too, used it once. So I, if I missed out on anybody else, uh, please let me know through the chat. Otherwise, we had a great session with rich uh, usage of language. And um, I'm looking forward to attending those sessions of yours. And that's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you, Grammarian Toastmaster Parvati Pillai for choosing an apt word for the apt situation. Festival of colors means mirth and laughter. And that's, what, that's why you chose that word, mirth. That was well thought of. And today in your report also, you focused on uh, what, were the good, uh, what were the good things which happened, the good phrases, which was highlighted. And you also made sure while you were highlighting areas for improvement, you did not na name the person. Just a suggestion. When you are highlighting the good usage, that time you can name the Toastmaster. So that's like a boosting him or her for that. Other things, of course, you remember. That was excellent written. Kudos, kudos to you. OK, now, sir, to time of Sushma. Now, you yes. just give me two minutes. For completing the because already we are at uh, six thirty three. Yes. Okay. Yes, so you, sir. Otherwise, you, instead of uh, going through the entire report, we shall play so, say, so what almost all every. Uh, so what whoever is for me whoever also, has time, you time you time my things for two minutes. Okay, I'm going to complete my report and then I'll be handing over to you. Okay, so for that, that's what I'm saying. So starting with the sergeant of arm. So he was promptly doing with a lot of energy and using the word of the day and encouraging the role takers. So that was done very aplomb. And thereafter, the introduction for the presiding officer was also made with a unique fashion. Then it was the role of a president, President Toastmaster Joseph. He has this unique style. He chose the holy occasion and he was totally prepared. Even now I can see the colors and the entire sweets over there. And he not only advised, he made sure he handed, gave, gave it to his grandson and granddaughter. So that was excellently done. And even thereafter, he took over the role as a Toastmaster of the day. He was considering that being a festival, there were very limited, limited attendance and role takers. So he, as a president of the club, took the leadership role and came to the occasion prepared. And that was beautifully done. Just a suggestion, since you were doing multiple roles as a, first as a president and then as a Toastmaster of the day, you could have added some suspense over there as if you were handing it over to the Toastmaster of the day. You, can, you could have given some introduction about him or her, and then welcome the Toastmaster Day. Toastmaster Joseph 
you could have added some more moth over that. So that would have been beautifully done. Then after that, of course, I've already focused on the impromptu prepared speaker, impromptu evaluators. So I'm just jumping to the table topic master who has been properly evaluated and the topics which he prepared. I would like to thank him specifically because being, being a VP education, a lot of effort he put before the meeting, asking the favorite color of each one, each role taker, that was beautifully done. And now the only role taker which I had not talk, spoke about is the timer. The timer did a great job, just a suggestion to timer. So when you cover, have a red card, so retain the red card, don't drop it out. So the person is jumping it beyond. So let him or her be mindful of the timing that he or she is crossing. So that is something you have to focus on. And sometimes you may have to butt in in case you feel the timing is exceeding. So that is also a quality because ultimately you are responsible to make sure the meeting starts on time and meeting ends on time. Even if someone gives you a suggestion, you can butt in because agenda was given clearly. So there should not be impromptu because that is something which is important in Toastmasters International etiquette. That was beautifully done. So with this, I complete my report, but I hand it back to the timer as of now to give her final report. Over to you. Okay. So to begin, to begin with, prepared speech, uh, prepared speech, Toastmaster Oroji, his um, time take was 6 minutes 44 seconds within the limits and moving on to table topics. The first speaker, Toastmaster Kaustu, 1 minute and guest Stella, 1 minute 13 seconds and Toastmaster myself, uh, Adarsh has uh, made a note of that and I should be, and Toastmaster uh, Suni, 1 minute 56 seconds, Toastmaster Momina, 1 minute 24 seconds, Toastmaster guest Anish, 1 minute 30 seconds, Toastmaster Parvati, 1 minute, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Millen, 2 minutes 23 seconds, Toastmaster Joseph, 2 minutes 12 seconds, Toastmaster Adarsh, 3 minutes 10 seconds, and Arojit for the table topics evaluation, the total time taken was 10 minutes 20 seconds, and uh, Parvati, 2 minutes um, 50 seconds for the grammarian report, and our counter, 3 minutes 30 seconds for the distinguished Toastmaster uh, Millen, uh, three minutes, two seconds at the end of the, just for the evaluation of general evaluation. So this is the report, sir, brief report. Thank you. Over to you. I know for giving this, highlighting the importance. With this, I hand it back to the Toastmaster Day, Toastmaster Joseph. Thank you, Milenji, for all the advice throughout the meeting that you have given to us, and definitely it will be followed. And let me thank you, all of you, for taking the roles and also for the, all the speakers and participation of uh, uh, table topic speeches and everything. I thank you so much for joining us today in making this club a successful one. And especially the, the function of Holi is more attractive uh, in Bangalore as a spring festival. In spite of that, you all attended our meeting, uh, so much of enthusiasm in it, leaving behind your family also for your quality time. I am very thankful from my heart for coming to this meeting. Now I'd like to ask our guest if you one or two lines about our meeting, how you enjoyed it for a brief time. How about guest Anyone? Anish? Anish, would you mind sharing your thoughts on the meeting? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, am I visible on screen? Yes, you are. Yes, you can go ahead. Yeah, I believe that the, uh, the meeting was extremely insightful about how I can improve my language and uh, how I can position my speech among one of the best. And uh, I think uh, that would basically summarize the speech for me and the reviews I have to give. Um, I'd like to thank uh, every one of you for all the topics that you've given me and all the pointers that I'll have to improve on. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for that guest, Anish. We also have Sun Ying in the room. Sun Ying, would you like to share your thoughts on the meeting? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can go ahead. Thank you for the invite by Adash. I enjoy myself a lot during the meeting. Uh, and I found that you guys have, have a very good teamwork and every one of you are very well equipped and uh, for the impromptu speaker also very well done and I like his speech also and the table topic sessions was very interesting so I enjoy myself tonight thank you for having me thank you for that Toastmaster Sun Ying I think that's probably it from our guests by the way the voting link is in the chat box we have already received a few votes you're free to cast your votes it's in the you have, you have another minute to cast your votes. You're free to do it. In the meantime, uh, I would like to request all the Toastmasters of our Speech Words Club. It's a reminder once again for you to renew your membership because the revenue renewals will as obtain a credit for your club if you do it as soon as possible. This is the final reminder. I would like to have it for all the Toastmasters who have not in your ten membership, and uh, I have a few, a few announcements also. We have a humorous speech in our next week meeting. Is a district champion Stephen Fernando, DTM from United Club from Malaysia. We also have a table topic supremo from French Chang Club, Singapore, DTM Brahma Kumar. And the table topic evaluator, Toastmaster Bharat from Bharat Nangya Club from Hong Kong. So this meeting would, uh, would be really a great one with all the participants from different countries. I request every one of you to take an opportunity to attend this meeting so that you will really enjoy. It is a humorous speech and you will definitely laugh even if you're not laughing all the way. Isabel, one more thing, I will just take the opportunity to say that although I will be joining the meeting, the celebrations will continue. Unfortunately, my grandchildren, they are six feet and above, could not fit into the screen and they were not able to bend also. <laughs> so this is the problem with my grandchildren. They have grown up so fast and very tall also. Is the so, the uh, winner... so the voting results are in. If you wouldn't mind, I'll go ahead and announce the winners and then we can adjourn the meeting and have our conversations. Yeah, it's already over. Uh... All right then. <laughs> Here are the voting results. They are in. I, for the best supporting role taker, we have Toastmaster Orojit, the joke master for today. He's not there in the room. But I'll certainly convey my regards, and I think all of you will as well. The best role taker for today was, again, Toastmaster Orojit, who was the Table Topics Evaluator. Congratulations on that, Toastmaster Orojit. For the best auxiliary role taker, well, we have, well, it's interesting. It is our guest from overseas, from Satuhati Toastmasters Club, Toastmaster Sun Ying. You are the best auxiliary role taker for this meeting. Thank you very much for joining us. For the best table topic speaker, the best table topic speaker for today is she is not in the room. She's not in the room, but she was. It is Toastmaster Momina. Toastmaster Momina, thank you very much. I will convey my regards to you after the meeting, but thank you very much for joining us. And that is it from me. I'd like to hand it back to the presiding officer again. Thank you, others, and thank you for uh, congratulations for all the winners who have taken part in our club today. Thank you so much. I adjourn the meeting number 656.